Aloha, welcome. Thank you for joining me on today's live stream. My name is Master Paul and as you've discovered based on the white piece of paper in front of this video, today is on rebuilding trust with soul power. I have been doing these live streams for over a year now and have a wonderful following, some very uh, dedicated souls that are appreciative of the wisdom of soul and how it can help to transform almost every aspect of life. So if there's anybody new watching this, ah, uh, it was backwards. Ah, uh, that's right, because of the way the video works. I'm going to have to write backwards so that it can be shown forwards. Brilliant. New lesson learned. So anyway, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining on today's live stream. Today is uh, building trust, rebuilding trust and learning how to write things backwards so when the video shows it, it can show the other direction. Anyway, welcome. Hopefully you had a, uh, a wonderful weekend this last weekend. We're starting a new week today. Here in Honolulu, we do have Master Shah's Tao Healing Center. So every Monday is a connection day where we, <coughs> we all connect as uh, the master teachers and even the uh, Shen, Qi, and Jing coordinators to talk about how better to serve humanity, how we can serve the local community, how we can wake people up to all the different uh, blessings that are available through the center. So I'll be doing that a little bit later today myself. So on this today's subject matter, um, there was really no precursor that led me to choose this. I did not necessarily have any trust issues that I'm aware of with my relationships. But when I was attuning to heaven and asking what should I be focusing on today, this was the message I heard. So apparently there are a lot of those out there who have felt betrayed and maybe have had their trust broken most likely more than once. And uh, this message will most likely resonate with them very well. <clears throat> so we've got a lot of folks joining in. Very grateful to see that. Um, it's been kind of hot and muggy where I'm at. It is summertime now. No complaining. We, you know, at least we don't have to deal with the snow here. But it has been a bit on the difficult side. Um, today, uh, I was putting together aspects uh, for my weekend workshop. Show of hands, how many of you were at my weekend workshop on understanding cancer's root causes? and the spiritual answers, uh, the spiritual roots and the spiritual answers. How many of you uh, were at that weekend workshop? Uh, if you missed it, you missed an excellent one. It was only $20, it's still available. <clears throat> um, I'm going to be using this as a platform to let people know that there are some significant spiritual solutions and answers for um, uh, you know, this, this real world problem that, that a lot of people have. And uh, so today I was working on another aspect of that, creating a self-help program so people could um, assist themselves. Uh, if they follow all the steps, they would have a great level of personal assistance. Because uh, we can heal ourselves. It's certainly uh, within the realm of everybody's reality. Uh, it just requires some additional guidance. And so I've been creating a, a special program uh, just for that. Of course, there's an honor fee associated with it because it's taken me quite a few hours of quite a few days to put it together so that people can follow those steps to self-healing. But um, in the long run, it will be very valuable. And it's a great uh, a tool for those that, that have limited budgets. So I look forward to revealing that in the future as well. So let's see who's joined us today. So welcome, Amy Hugrick. Welcome, uh, Kristen Rojas. Thank you for letting me know it was backwards. Welcome, Robin. <coughs> welcome, Nicole. Aloha, Maddie de Guaylo. Um, welcome also to Brianna. Aloha, Kristen Strachan. Welcome, Sherry Mattox. Aloha. And welcome, Candy Cornette. I know Candy just recently saw the Cancer Workshop uh, recording. So I had to check with her to see if she got it. Welcome, Janice. And welcome, Angie Taylor. Aloha, Susan. Welcome, Manuela. And Shakira Michi, haven't seen you in a while, Shakira, welcome. 
Welcome Jennifer Crest Smith and Jessica Gregory. Hi Pat, good to see you. Welcome Johnny. Welcome Elizabeth. Peggy Mulcahy, welcome. Sherry Jarman, aloha. Welcome Rishav. And welcome Lisa, welcome Suki Singh, aloha Julia Lawrence. Thank you all for taking the time to join me as I started out by saying it seems that this subject matter of rebuilding our trust might be a, um, a relative and an important one. Uh, a lot of us do go through some significant pain and suffering when it comes to our trust being broken and there are certainly different levels of it that can occur. So we're going to be touching on that. But since we have the, uh, a good number of folks here, let's go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul. We're going to be placing our hands in the soul light, soul service hand position. So that, that's much like a prayer, but we drop the left hand in front of the heart center. Right hand gently, point, uh, gently remains pointed towards heaven. For all those that are new, this is a mantra. This is called a hand mudra position to allow heaven to connect to our heart center. And the mantra is a, is a mantra that can help self heal. So I encourage you to make a request and receive the blessing as we do this. So I'll invoke and ask all the beings of light to join us. <clears throat> so dear our beloved creator, dear beloved mother earth, father heaven, all the beings of light in the middle, beloved Jesus, mother Mary, beloved Buddha, all the bodhisattvas, angels, healing angels, archangels, masters and ascended masters, lamas, gurus, saints, sifus, shurfus. We love you, we honor you, respect you. We ask for your presence at this time in whatever way is most valuable for each of us individually. We invite our individual heavens teams, guides, angels, and saints. We ask them to please as well be with us and to assist us with today's guidance, wisdom, and practice for the subject matter of releasing blockages related to trust, to rebuild our trust. We're very grateful for any uh, blessings that you offer at this time. Dear the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace, and Harmony, transmitted to all souls in all universes, love you, honor you, respect you. We ask that as we chant your Source Soul Song to please bless all of us and to reach out and bless all souls in all universes. And we invite all souls in all universes to chant with us. So. This is a blessing for those that enjoy the song, would like to know more about it. Kristen has posted a link on the timeline. It is a, the copyright has been removed. The song is to bless humanity. So it's certainly recommended <coughs> that you download it, enjoy it, and play it often. Let us chant together to offer this service. Lula, 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 So again, welcome to everybody. 
I think I've captured everybody coming in. Welcome, Maria Magdalena. Welcome, C Love. And C Love's newborn. <clears throat> uh, welcome to everybody that I haven't mentioned. Please forgive me if I haven't mentioned you. So today is a Monday. It's the start of a new week. And it's the start of a new life any given moment that you may choose. Um, there has been and is currently a lot of awakening on Mother Earth. And that awakening comes in many different forms. Uh, for half of humanity, it's quite painful. For the other half of humanity, it's quite um, a range between uh, painful and invigorating. And the, the range has to do with the ability to work with the understanding of um, the purpose in life, why we're here, how it's all interconnected, um, why things happen to, to us the way they do, why things happen to those we care about the way they do. There's a great deal of um, uh, discord in humanity today. <clears throat> There's a great deal of distrust. Um, there is also a great deal of love. And when we bring love to the table, when we bring unconditional love to the table, that comes with an open heart. Uh, open hearts come with vulnerability. They come with trust. And that's why it hurts so much when trust is broken. Because trust is offered very often along with an open heart. Um, now some people are, they're geared towards um, offering trust. Now regardless, you know, I give you the opportunity to, uh, to cut off your own hands, so to speak, some might say. So everyone has their own um, approach to when and if they offer trust. And everyone has their own response if trust is impacted negatively, if there's a, a betrayal of any level it occurs. So we have some additional folks joining us. Aloha and welcome to, uh, to Julie. Welcome, thanks for joining us. Welcome Michelle Lynn Gill and welcome also to Catherine Naron. Really grateful for your presence. I hope you're able to stick around. If you're not, this is of course recorded. Um, send a friend request or go to my uh, my business page, Paul Fletcher, and you can also watch the recording there. So trust is something that is also related to our upbringing. We may, for example, as a child growing up, have been made promises by our uh, closest uh, family members, typically mother or father. And those promises were broke, even if it might have been um, something that was unintentional. Sometimes a parent says, I'm coming back, and they die in a car accident. Um, sometimes uh, a parent says, uh, like, I, my, my father and I had a trust breach uh, growing up at age 10, 11, 12. The, the parents had divorced, and, you know, I didn't really understand what was going on. I just know that dad said he would come back to see me. Uh, you know as much as he could and definitely on my birthdays and Christmas so I remember sitting there on my birthday you know packed up backpack you know ready to go I was wearing my shiny new Christmas clothes and dad never showed up now, of course he had a reason for it, which I found out later but it still didn't it, it breached the trust so these you know I remember that even today uh, and that was at 10 11 so when we have those kinds of things it doesn't really matter if we remember it or not what tends to happen is it creates a structure in which we bring a bit of a jaded self to the table whenever we make a choice or a, uh, a decision to offer trust and to what percentage of trust that we offer. So rebuilding trust uh, can be difficult, definitely, if there is specific associations. For me, uh, this wasn't a very you know major thing, um, but. It, it, it has to do with, uh, in this case, a male role model. So could it be that throughout my life I had difficulty with male role models? I definitely have difficulty with authority. Hard to say if there's an interconnection there. Um, and I see a lot of comments on people saying, you know, uh, people have done these things to them or around them, and it's impacted their choices. It's impacted their, their, um, 
willingness to have an open heart. So the, the subject matter has deep roots, as you can see. But let's get to the core of the real issue. The core of the real issue has to do with the heart. We are, all of us, even those who, who created great pain in our lives, the ones who created great distrust, the ones who created betrayal, even they are still souls. Every thing is from original creator. Everything has a soul. And that SOB, that very unpleasant person, that person you love that said something to you that was unable to fulfill that saying, all of those different pains that we experience from a breaking of trust, no matter how it showed up in your life, still has a soul behind it. And those individual souls are, um, they're just as, as beautiful and perfect and pure as your soul. They're no better or no worse than your soul. So as much as you might love them and have pain because they didn't return, or as much as you may hate them because they betrayed you, all of that has no relevance from the perspective of heart and soul. Soul power, which is how we resolve these betrayals and rebuild trust, is built on the, the deep validated understanding that when you heal at the level of soul first, then the mind can heal, the body can heal, the emotions can heal. Everything else follows the soul because the soul is the carrier of all of your experiences of all lifetimes. The soul is what that person over there that you might be pointing the finger at that broke the trust. That person over there is being labeled as the source. But that person over there, whether it's a love attachment and they left your life, or whether it's a, it's a important person that's supposed to be a, a wonderful role model, um, and then they, they broke your trust by going to jail because they murdered somebody, or any number of things, right? We are not doing ourselves as a soul any service whatsoever by holding ourselves inside the prison cell. It's really important to put a visual to this. Anytime we have any form of distrust, betrayal, etc., our hands are on the prison bars, rattling the cage, placing the blame somewhere else, but who's inside the prison? Right? So, in order to move to the place of rebuilding our trust, we, mu we must look at what we have done to, to not only place us there, but hold us in that place of distrust. Because we certainly can't get to where we need to be unless we can recognize where we are. So it starts with that. Now, the heart center, the message center, the heart chakra, is not a cute word that you find on the internet when you're, when you're searching out chakras. It's not a cute word that represents, you know, a pretty diamond shape with radiating auric colors that come out of it when you come across a beautiful picture on it on the internet. That is not a heart chakra, guys. A heart chakra is an integral, exceedingly important part of the human energetic body. And it has a direct association to an open heart of original love. It has a direct association to our ability as a soul to return to heaven. Because and this might be hard to grasp uh, up front, but the reality is creator is one. Creator went poof, and there's hundreds, trillions, billions, so many zeros of souls. We can't count the, the number of souls, but we're all one. We cannot go back individually and still become one. We can go back, but we're never going to be one again until everybody comes back. In other words, all the boats have to rise in the harbor when the, when, the, when, the, when the waves come in, the boats rise together. So if we do not deal with this at the level of soul, we're simply just going to be treading water and, and pointing fingers outside of us and saying it's always somebody else's fault. The level of soul would look at this and say, okay, 
I, the personality, was hurt. But the individual over here that I've been pointing my finger at, that I've been saying is the source of this hurt, is also the one that um, is a soul, no different than I. Now, I've stated this before, but there's quite a few new people today, so uh, work with me on this. All souls want the, the highest and the best. The personalities, well, they clash, you know, ex-husbands, ex-wives, ex-boyfriends, ex-girlfriends, right? There's always going to be that unpleasantry there. But that's the personality. At the soul level, the souls are not ever happy when there is discord, when there is distrust created, when there is a breach of betrayal created, when there is any of these conditions brought about that takes the, the souls that are supposed to be there for a reason away from uh, love, then there is unhappiness at the level of souls. There's additional information here that needs to be comprehended. And this is also difficult to swallow uh, for some folks. And it works on the, on the understanding of karma. It works on the understanding of deeds. It works on the understanding of what has been done upon others eventually finds its way back to you. What you have done upon others eventually finds its way back and so forth. So for being the one that is betrayed as an ego personality, pointing the finger to the other ego personality, um, that may or may not be true. Maybe that that person as the ego did betray you. But from the soul level, it's not going to help anybody to stick with that perspective, that um, knowingness. Because at the soul level, what is not known is, was that the first of its kind? Did this person simply break the trust? Or were you, as a personality in a previous time, the betrayer? They, the one being betrayed, and now they've come back in this time to remind you. That part is really hard to grasp, hard to um, tie down because you have to be able to uh, open the Akashic Records, see them clearly, and discern the accuracy of that. But even that in the biggest picture doesn't really matter because, again, the healing has to occur at the level of soul. And the reality is that 99.9% .9 of us are not going to be able to crack open that Akashic Record and take a look inside and say, oh, I was the one to be betrayed first, I better ask for forgiveness. Probably not going to happen for the vast majority of us. So we have to look at this from this much bigger soul-based perspective. We have to look at this from the perspective of if this person harmed me first or if I harmed them first. In either way, I'm really not enjoying how this broke my heart. I'm really not enjoying how I am behind the bars rattling the cage. I'm really not uh, doing myself, my personality, my ego, my emotions, my mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs. I'm not doing myself any favors. So if I'm going to bring self-healing to myself, I need to rise above the current ways I've been looking at this from the level of emotions, from the level of the mind. I need to look at it from the level of soul. I need to look at it from the level of the bigger picture. When you can move to the level as big as the picture, you're stepping into a place of responsibility. You're stepping into the place what the souls look at everything from. Because your soul and that other individual's soul, that, and there may be more than one, that you have this breach of trust with, this betrayal with, or whatever it might look like in your world, the souls are not happy with this choice. They're not happy that a lesson has not been learned. They are not happy that they might have to live another lifetime and do this to each other again. They're not happy that uh, one or the other had made that choice. The way karma is cleared, the way alignment occurs, the way um, the debris field is cleared and the heart is opened again is through comprehending soul and soul power to clear those blockages. Okay. So how do we clear those blockages? We now understand what is the, the potential source of the, the pain, the, the, the lack of trust, the betrayal, whatever it might be. We understand what that potential source may be. Uh, we now comprehend that everyone and everything has a soul, including the person we've been pointing a finger at and ourselves. 
And so now we have to go, well, how can we resolve this? We want to take a look a bit more at the heart center. The message center is, is the portal through which your soul connects with heaven. It's the portal through which heaven connects to your soul. It's the portal through which you receive your guidance from your heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints. It is the portal through which you open yourself to receive love in the physical realm. It is the portal through which finances and relationships can be healthy and blossoming, flourishing, or failing. It is not a small uh, aspect of your soul. It is beyond exceedingly important. So the, the guidance and wisdom, the practices we'll be doing today to release these trust-based blockages are directly associated with releasing the blockages at the level of the heart. Because in almost every case, even though we contemplate it mentally, it, it broke a trust related to, I am going to open my heart and give you this trust. And then something happened where it was cut. And so this causes us to close down this area. It causes us to look at every person differently when there's any triggers associated with that one soul that might have brought us this experience. So let's say, for example, it was a, a girlfriend <clears throat> and there's a betrayal because she took your boyfriend or she took your ex-husband or whatever it might be, right? Whenever we uh, uh, have any triggers that represents that person, maybe they look the same, maybe they have the same perfume, maybe they have the same colored shirt that you saw when you first met this person that took the husband away. I'm just making this up, but we all have triggers, right? And so in, in, instantly when those triggers occur, our heart closes again. It's kind of like reaching out, grabbing the jail door and shutting the jail door on yourself again. So in order to completely release this, you have to have that much bigger picture and perspective. You have to be willing to open the gate to your own self-made jail cell and not go back inside. Okay. And the ability to not go back inside is by having this higher soul based perspective. So we're going to do first a forgiveness practice. Now, uh, again, for those that are new, a forgiveness practice is so much more than I'm sorry. <laughs> In the wisdom and teachings that I work with, it can be uh, full of depth and value. Uh, and it is one of the core, C-O-R-E, core tools for releasing the suffering that we may be experiencing in life. And the biggest mistake I think everybody makes, and when I say everybody, I mean everybody, is not doing it on a daily basis, consistently, for almost anything when we have a suffering. Because regardless of the suffering, um, we have to be able to fix this. So Julia asked a very good question. I'm sure other people would like to hear this answer too. So I'm going to pause and assist with this. She says, I lost my son in a car accident. How can I regain my trust in God? Okay. So Julia, I'm going to... I'm going to offer what's called a flow, which is not a mind-based answer. It's an answer that I'll ask heaven to assist. Uh, and listen to the words and see if, if it brings you any solace, okay? So give me a moment to check in and tune in. <clears throat> this is something, by the way, that individuals can receive. They can receive um, personal soul readings if they would like. My beloved Julia, I love you. There is not a moment in creation that I do not love you. I love your child. There is not a moment in creation where I have not loved your child. 
This creation is vast and literally limitless. When I created you, your son, and all souls, I endowed each soul with purity, my love, and the greatest blessing of all, free will. For it was in the blessing of free will that all of my children could experience everything in my creation. You have experienced great sadness, grief, and unbearable pain. Your son has not. How can I say this? Because he is my child. You are my child. He had many experiences before being your son. In fact, he was your father, grandfather, and he was your sister and lover in other lifetimes. The nature of life is one of experience free of cause that I initiate. The blessing of free will creates choice. There is choice that in some cultures where one who has returned it is celebrated. There is no grief. There is, of course, memories and sadness for the loss of new memories. But there is, in some cultures, joy. There is, in others, a consistency of pain, remembrance, etc. The heart is the most important tool that I created in you, my beloved daughter. It is full of pain because you are searching for a reason an answer, a justification, a answer to the why. And in the questioning you are receiving tremendous experiences that unbeknownst to you are assisting you to be a most incredible soul I said a moment ago, your son felt none of your suffering. Why is that? Because instantly upon his return to my heart, he was reminded of the purity of his original essence. This is why it is always suggested to have no attachment to the understanding but instead to the love for when the attachment is to the love there is always the alignment to the oneness that all are from when there is 
alignment to the love that has been remembered there is the opening of the heart versus the attachment to grief there is no words that can smooth the choice of how in this life you have responded to your son's departure there is however and has never left you his love my love creation creations love and the focus on love is what is the key I love you my beloved child I love all of you and ask all of yours forgiveness for any suffering that has been blamed upon me no I have no nothing but love for you regardless how 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 thank you thank you thank you <sighs> not easy to flow um, that source <clears throat> so I hope that assists you uh, on s in some level in some way so as indicated there are many ways that trust can be broken and we all want to bring about a form of balance in our life so that we can move forward it does require an open heart it does require a willingness to change perspective and no one ever says it's necessarily easy but it is um, important if we are to grow so let us do a forgiveness practice <clears throat> let us place our hands again in soul light soul service hand position again which is much like a prayer just drop the left hand in the front of the heart center and keep the right hand gently pointed towards heaven close our eyes I will walk you through this forgiveness practice and then we will do some um, mantra and chanting and I will send a blessing to help us all clear blockages okay so closing our eyes <coughs> if comfortable please repeat after me To the soul of my ancestors, could you please come? Could you please do this forgiveness practice with me? Dear all souls, in all time, if I or my ancestors have created conditions of betrayal, of distrust, if I or my ancestors have made promises to you in loving relationships in business dealings as a parent to a child brother to sister or any form of family relation if I or my ancestors have made comments promises indications contracts or any form of communication that came with an expectation and we broke those contracts promises vows words I have no excuses I truly and sincerely apologize 
I deeply regret having broken any vows, any promises. I deeply regret bringing harm or suffering to any souls in any time. To all of the souls in this lifetime that have broken vows of love to me, broken promises, broken uh, contracts, made agreements, verbal or otherwise, and have broken those, I also offer you my unconditional forgiveness, for I have come to realize that by holding you liable, I have instead kept myself in a cage. I recognize that there is a possibility that I initiated this liability and possibly I broke vows or promises first. So I release you fully and completely of any spiritual debt you may have to me and to all the souls that I and my ancestors may have harmed, I ask most humbly for your unconditional forgiveness. I sincerely apologize. Dear my beloved God, our beloved Creator, my name is Paul Fletcher, Paul Fletcher, Paul Fletcher. State your name three times. I love you. I find it very difficult sometimes to forgive you because I thought you would never bring such suffering to me by taking somebody so close to me and I have not been able to understand therefore I blame you please forgive me my beloved creator I still admit I do not understand, but I recognize your unconditional love and I ask most sincerely for your forgiveness for the times that I have blamed you, shook my fist at you, yelled at you. I deeply apologize. Please forgive me. And we ask the soul of divine forgiveness to please come. We ask the divine forgiveness saints, temples, heaven's animals, and all the blessings in the divine forgiveness calligraphies to come out at this time. Offer their blessings to all of the souls to release our trust blockages held in our heart, mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs. Bless us to more fully awaken, open our hearts to trust and keep our hearts open with awareness. Let us chant together with love in our hearts, forgiveness in our thoughts. Divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness. Divine forgiveness, <coughs> divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness. Divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness. Divine for
forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness. Divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness. Step out of the cage, close the door, throw away the keys, walk away from the false this choose from now on to see from the level of soul offer your gratitude offer your forgiveness receive forgiveness divine forgiveness divine forgiveness Divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness. How, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. So I want to ask if, um, Julie, if you're still with us, if you're still with us, then I want to use you as a demonstration to offer a crown chakra blessing for releasing the heart blockages that inhibit us from rebuilding trust. So let me know if you're still available, if you're still here. Okay, so Julie's still here. So this uh, blessing that I'm going to offer Julie is available for every person if they're interested. It will be a crown chakra blessing. <clears throat> I will offer a soul reading, much like I just offered a reading just now, uh, as to the benefits of it. So if you have significant um, betrayal in your life, trust issues, and it's hard for you to open your heart again, you may want to consider this crown chakra blessing. Okay, so Julie, Julia, please sit up straight where you're at. Bring your back away from the back of the chair. Place your feet flat on the floor. Touch your tongue gently to the roof of your mouth. Relax your palms on your lower abdomen, Julia. Julia will receive a waterfall of virtue and heaven's blessings to release whatever pain is supposed to be released to open her heart to trust again. Prepare to receive, Julia. Give me a moment to prepare. This is a two-minute crown chakra blessing for Julia Lawrence for releasing the pain of the loss of her son, opening her heart to trust again as appropriate. Crown Chakra Blessing for Julia. Start! Divine Forgiveness Divine Forgiveness Divine Forgiveness 
forgiveness, divine forgiveness, <coughs> divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine love, divine love, divine Divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine. Divine love, divine love, divine love. How, how, how? Crown chakra blessing complete. You are very, very 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 blessed so please sh uh, share if there's anyone that has spiritual third eye please share what you've seen um, and then um, uh, so Julia you also please share whatever you experienced <coughs> I will tune in and offer a, a classic record reading as to what transpired How? For our beloved daughter Julia, this blessing was a life saving blessing. There has been in the history of your personal and ancestral lineage depression and additional future based conditions could have brought about a significant depth of this emotion with the possibility of leading to a choice to take your life this had roots going back many centuries in which unpleasant choices were made by those in your ancestral tree. At that time, you were witness, but not directly involved, but could have done something about it. The combination of the choices made at those times created a great deal of this emotional condition upon others so there was great association with this and the release of this blessing there was the divine's forgiveness to you his daughter for the anger you have held in your heart for the return of your child to his 
soul. And in its place has been put many new seeds, seeds of gratitude, seeds of beauty, seeds of wisdom, seeds of hope. And as these blossom, you will notice only memories of value and the release of pain. With this blessing, you have saved over 14 lifetimes of potential significant emotional-based suffering. You are very blessed on this day. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, um, you're very blessed, Julia. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, for all those that, that uh, have some significant blockages related to trust, um, betrayal, anything of that nature, and has kept you from opening your heart, kept you from really moving forward, um, you may want to consider a blessing of this nature. This is called the Crown Chakra Blessing. The honor fee for it is very reasonable considering the amount of blockages that could be removed. It's a $100 honor fee for these, and as you know, as you've witnessed, they can be offered remotely with great efficacy. Um, you can learn more at the website. Kristen has posted it on the on the uh, scroll through tabs, and um, it's just one way I can serve you. There's many other ways I can serve you, but this is one. So I wish to offer my deepest gratitude to my beloved Creator, all beings of light, divine down source, to my spiritual teacher and father, Master Shah. Uh, for my gratitude to all of you for coming, all of the folks that are new. I encourage you to hit the um, uh, subscribe button uh, on my page. Also go to my Facebook page. Uh, I do have a fan page. And um, I encourage you to please uh, ask more questions. Continue to watch my live streams. Listed above this is links to the previous live streams. And also at my website I have podcasts. So I look forward to serving you in the future. I will be back tomorrow, same time, Monday through Thursday. Uh, and I am here to assist you with your soul journey. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye, everyone.